Okay, so now on this problem right here, evaluating second derivative of a trigonomic function. So now, see this right here? This says double prime, right? Yeah. Double prime, that means I'm doing second derivative of that. Yeah. So first thing I'm gonna do is, if I do derivative of secant, right? Mm -hmm. That's the same as saying quotient rule of, because secant is one over cosine x, right? Okay, that's quotient, so that's f, that's g, f prime is zero, g, that, yeah, that's supposed to be an f, uh, g prime is negative sine x, right? Okay, so I'm gonna quotient rule this, so it's gonna be zero times, zero, it's a, it's a, it's of a constant, there's no variable, so it's gonna be zero, okay? All right, so it's gonna be cosine x, zero times cosine x minus uh, negative sine x times one, right? Over cosine, yeah, so cosine squared x, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna go through and actually do the cleanup on this. So as I clean this up, uh, zero times anything gives me zero and minus a negative gives me positive. So it's gonna become a positive sine x over cosine squared x. So this is my first derivative, right? Yep, that's the first derivative. So I have to take the second derivative. I'm gonna leave it like this for a reason. I'm gonna leave it like this for a reason, so when I do my second derivative. So it's gonna be sine x over cosine squared x. All right? Okay, so that's, I'm gonna take the derivative of that. Okay, and I wanna pull this up right here. Okay, so I could have just used this one right here too. So let me see, let's do a tangent out of it. Okay, so I'm gonna break up my thing here. So this is gonna be the same as saying sine x over cosine x times one over cosine x, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna break that up. So this right here is tangent and that one is secant, right? So it's gonna be tangent of x times secant of x. So what rule is that now? Product, product. So I'm gonna do derivative of that, right? So give me one second, I need to double check. There's freshman next door, I left for Okay, so right here, now, product, so it's gonna be F here, G here, F prime. So F prime, so I can go back to my list, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at my list. What was F prime? So derivative of tangent is gonna be secant squared. So I'm going to that, so it's gonna be secant squared X and G prime. So g prime, so that's gonna be secant squared is secant. secant tangent, right? Okay, secant tangent. There we go. So product rule on this one, so it's gonna be uh, secant squared x times, so it's f prime g secant plus sine then it's gonna be g prime, which is secant x tangent x times tangent of x. So there's a lot to clean up here, but since this is my f double prime of x, that's my f double prime. I, I Before I could go through and like clean everything up, this is one I'm gonna plug in. So I don't have to clean it up. I could just plug in and call that a day because I'm instead of doing all the simplification and all that, just plug in what I'm supposed to have. 
So I'm looking for F double prime at D over four. Yes, pi over four. Okay, now, pi over four. So think about your unit circle, okay? Now imagine it in your head. So in your head, you're, you're, you've got a picture of it. Now at pi over four, at pi over four, that's the same as 45 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. So secant is one over the x value. So what is the x value at pi over four? Very good. Square root of 2 over 2, right? So now I'm going to flip that. I'm going to flip that. So it's going to be 2 over... No, I don't have to rationalize. I don't have to rationalize. Okay? Because all this I rationalize at the end. Because if I rationalize, that's just going to make more work. Now, it's this secant. Now, how many secants do I have over here? I have three of them, right? So it's going to be... I could just do to the third... But you know what? It's gonna make life a whole lot easier. Okay, so if I just go like this and then do another one. Why would I just do a square on that one? What's gonna happen if I square a square root? It goes away, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm just gonna clean up that one. I could have to the third power, you know, but uh, it's, it's still going to leave me with the same thing over here. I'm still going to have a radical 2 there. Okay, so it's easier to see this. You know, clean up your squares. All right, so plus, now secant again, which is going to be my 2 over rad 2, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is tangent? Now, one. tangent is y over x, right? Mm -hmm. So pitching that pi over 4, the y value is rad 2 over 2, the x value is rad 2 over 2, if I divide same thing top and bottom, I get 1. So both x and y are the same, so I'm going to get 1. And how many tangents do I have? I have two of them, so I'm going to do what on that one? Squared it, right? So very good. So it's going to be f prime, or I'm sorry, f double prime, pi over 4. Let's do this work. So this first square is going to give me 4, right? That's 4 over 2. What's 4 over 2 going to give me? 2. two. Now I'm going to multiply since all this right here is just going to be 2. So it's going to be 2 times this other side, which is going to be? There you go. 4 over rad 2, right? Plus sign. 2 over rad 2. Okay, so go ahead, do my math. Do they have a common denominator? Yeah, yeah they do. So it's going to give me 6 over rad 2, and this is a point in which I would rationalize here. So if I rationalize here, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by rad 2. 6 rad 2 over 2, right? Which will reduce to 3 rad 2. Now, one thing that we get from this, we got the quotient rule to get the first derivative, right? Because this came out to be the f prime of x, right? Yes? And I broke it up to this. So the derivative of secant is going to be secant tangent, isn't it? Isn't that what I had up here? Because sine over cosine is tangent, isn't it? And 1 over cosine is secant, right? So we did the quotient rule to actually get this in the first place. So now, now you know that you can do it, just in case you do forget it. But you could just go, this is like an identity thing. So what's the derivative of secant? You would tell me secant tangent. What's the derivative of tangent? You would say secant squared. We could do the math on that one, too. I think I did the math on that, didn't I? Did I do the math on that? Hey, yes, I did. I did. I did do the math on this. So, secant squared. All right. So, 
Now, okay, this one right here. Uh, object hanging on spring, making the spring two meters long, its equilibrium position. If the object is pulled down one meter, release, then it will oscillate up and down. So the spring is gonna be springy up and down a little bit, you know, until it actually finally gets back to the point. Okay, the length of L, so that's the length of the spring after T seconds is modeled by that. Okay, now how long does the length of the spring vary? So if it goes down one, if I pull it down one, what's a meter? Yeah, if I pull it down one meter, how much would it go up? Not a whole meter, just close, close to a meter. Since this is oscillating, it's not gonna go all the way up a meter, but that's the most that it would go. It would, it would go about that. So the length would vary. So in between three and two here, okay? So it's gonna vary between that. So it's gonna be varying in between three and one. So that's what it's going. So it's actually this from here, which is gonna be two meters. That's how much it's actually varying from one place to the other. Find the velocity of the object. So now we have the length, okay? To find the velocity, what would I do? Okay, find, find the derivative, right? So in this case, it would be L prime of T would give me negative sign. Negative sign, very good of t right here at what position is the speed of the object maximum three. at three right. at three right yeah. so that means that it, it should be maximum so if i let it go here okay so how would i figure this out so i have this right here, right? So I'm gonna actually use this for the calculator so you guys could actually see this here. Uh, takes too long to actually load. All right, so now you guys could be graphing this right now while we're waiting for mine to load. So graph the function and then graph the derivative. Make sure it's in radian. Two plus cosine of x. There we go. And my derivative would be negative sine x here. All right, so. All right, you guys ready? Okay, so right here, so from this graph, okay, what position is speed of the object max? Now, do you recall, what is speed? What is speed? So distance divided by time. Okay, it is distance divided by time, but according to the velocity. How do I get it from the velocity? No. No, no, that's a, that's acceleration. It's the absolute value. It's the absolute value of the velocity. So when is this at its greatest? 
Okay. When is it at its most? At the top. And because speed is the absolute value of the velocity, it would be bottom also. Now, think about this carefully. What are my, what is my domain of this? I have a graph right here. Now, what is a practical working domain of this? We're talking about T's, right? What does T represent? Time. Time. So now think about my graph. What is my working domain? What do I want to use? Huh? Oh, the T's. Yeah, what, what, what about the T's? Yeah, positive. Positive, thank you, that's what I needed. Because we're not gonna be dealing with negative time, right? Yeah. We're gonna be dealing with only positive time. So a working domain means, all right, this application, okay, would be only talking about from zero positive, right? That's what I mean about a working domain. Kind of like if we're talking about the number of people on a plane. A working domain would have to start at zero, right? We wouldn't have negative people. Unless on that plane ride over here, you actually had that you know, really angry negative person sitting next to you, right? Okay. Okay. Or if you, if you came over here from some strange, strange country and had like a chicken sitting next to you on the plane ride. Yeah, that, yes, okay, all right. So, now, right here, so where is it gonna be at? Okay, so I'm starting zero. So how do I tell my calculator to start at zero? Menu, window, we could do settings right here. So settings, I would set that to zero, right? Okay, max, let's go 10. Okay, and the up and down. What do you think the up, what would be the highest, I'm sorry, the lowest I would have here? Should be negative one, right? Should be negative one. Okay, so uh, what what would the highest be? Three. Three. There we go. See, so right here we have negative one, right? And then it goes up to three. So I have both graphs on here now. So because of that, because of that, so this is the graph of the function, right? Okay, and the absolute value of velocity. Absolute value of velocity. So that means, what is the lowest point right here? So let's, let's actually analyze that graph. Let's find it. Find the minimum. Okay, I'm clicking this graph. I want a lower bound here, upper bound here, and it says it's gonna be 1.75. So that's when T is 1.75. So that's gonna be, okay, right here. Can you go back to the calculator? To the calculator? Yeah. yeah. But 1.5 is the, is the T value. T. It's time. It's like in this time it's going to be oh. the maximum. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so one point five seven. Okay, so I, I yeah, I know I was messing that up there. Okay. So I'd say one point five seven is my max. speed okay now for this next one it says at what position is the speed of the object max oh we just did that okay that was part C uh, where am I at? D find acceleration of the object ooh acceleration is the what second derivative. second derivative so we said that this is the first derivative so it's gonna be L double prime of T What's the derivative of negative sine? Uh, negative cosine. Negative cosine of t. At what position is acceleration equal to zero? Uh, 
Okay. As much traffic will be affected with the position. Okay, right. So it should be when? At the middle of two. Uh, yeah, should be at two. Okay, that means acceleration, so it's actually gonna change direction, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's actually going from my natural point, from stretching it to compressing it and going back and forth. So it should be at two, right there. So position that it's gonna be equal to zero. So because I'm going from a stretch, right? So, I'm, so up to here, then everything right here should be decreasing here. So the, So when it's all the way down to this point at two, that means that acceleration would be down because it's eventually going to get down to that point, right? Mm -hmm. At two. All right, I think that one's it, right? Uh, actually, yeah, I think I just, there it is. Yep, all right. Ugh. Like and subscribe.